Hey y'all, this Chief, CEO of the G-Boys, entrepreneur, firefighter, martial arts, cage fighting, done it all. We all been waiting for this. We all been waiting for the X-Men and for Marvel to cross over. We all know X-Men started it off with the franchises, but Marvel has definitely took it to the next level. But X-Men, on the other hand, has covered, you know, comedy, culture, history, and even they have a scary movie coming out, so I'm very interested in the X-Men lineup. But I don't think they should do away with none of these things, and I don't think they should do reboots, because we don't want more origin stories. We want crossovers. The first movie that's inevitable is Hulk vs. Wolverine. So where you start that story off is you have it with the Avengers Mansion, the West Coast one, getting attacked. There's not very many people there, but people are kidnapped, people are killed, and there are maybe one or two people left there who are testifying that it was the Hulk. So Captain America and Falcon dispatch, and they go after the Hulk. Second place to get hit is the X-Men Mansion. They get attacked. Bunch of, once again, students get killed, students get kidnapped. There's maybe one or two people there that survived somehow. And they would just say there was a giant hawk that came and destroyed the mansion and took a bunch of the kids and killed any of them that he wanted, basically. So Professor X calls Wolverine. Wolverine instantly goes, starts looking for the hawk. Doesn't take him very long because the Wolverine is a beast with it. Him and Wolverine face off and they have an epic battle. After a few moments of them fighting, of course, Falcon and Captain America jump in. They help save the day from Wolverine getting ripped in half, and they apprehend the Hulk. That's when you can have Wolverine and Captain America have conversations of old wars. They're old men. They talk about old things. After the Hulk is put into custody, Wakanda is attacked. They're destroyed. It's similar to the claw attack because technology and weapons are stolen. People are kidnapped. People are killed. People who are left over, same story. It was the Hulk. The people blame T'Challa because they're saying that he allowed the white man in. T'Challa goes to investigate only to find that the Hulk was in custody during the attack. So they put two and two together and realize it wasn't the Hulk that did it. So you have a bunch of the greatest minds, Illuminati, coming together. You have Reed Richards, Doctor Strange, Beast, Black Panther. You have all these dudes coming into the same room. And they're all working on Bruce Banner to find out what's wrong with him. Because he has no memory. And the Hulk won't go away. So they get him to resort back. They get him to heal. He still hasn't had memory. They start to recover his memory. Professor X is trying to recover his memory. During this process, next thing that's attacked is the Avengers Mansion in New York. It's taken over, all the people are taken captive, and this is where it's similar to Planet Hulk. Except that Red Hulk has all the people under his command. So they come down, they find out the Red Hulk is running everything down there. He has all the people with obedience disc, and he's making them fight against the heroes that aren't turned. He also has control of the Thunderbolts, which we're going to give him all types of soldiers, at least 10 to 15 soldiers, Thunderbolts. You can have Deadpool, and you can have Venom. There's so many characters that you could throw in there from the Thunderbolts just to make it more epic. Luke Cage, anybody, you can grab them from the Defenders and throw them in there and just make it amazing. The battle is so vicious that Thor comes down himself and gets down with the Red Hulk. The Red Hawk, we're going to switch the Green Hawk in the Thor story. Let Thor get his arm broke. The whole time, Bruce Banner is analyzing. So then Bruce Banner runs up on the Red Hawk with the iron body on. They get down. He has his iron suit. He starts to piss off the Red Hawk. The Red Hawk starts getting hotter and hotter to the point where he starts melting the armor, forces Banner to turn to Green Hawk. Then he starts trying to punk the Green Hawk because he knows that he's really mad about the Green Hawk. So him and the Green Hawk get down, but he's not stronger than the Green Hawk. And the Green Hawk starts to torment him and taunt him and make fun of him. Red Hawk then becomes super angry and explodes and turns back into Ross, which then he is arrested for his crimes against humanity. All right, now the second part of the story is going to have to be the Spider-Verse. And I would say you started off with the Marvel Cinema Universe Spider-Man. You go ahead and have him fight someone easy like the Shocker for the first few minutes. He's doing good. He's winning the day. He 
takes him down. Then all of a sudden, the Sinister Six, Sinister Six comes through, and Doctor Ock basically injects him with a mutation virus that turns him into the big ugly spider that everybody's scared of. This is when Madam Web steps in. She's gonna first transport Spider-Man to the X-Men and say, hey, I need you guys to fix him. He's rabid, he's crazy. You guys are uh, mutant experts. Second thing she does, she goes and she starts contacting different spider man I say, first we need to choose from the Spider-Man from the movies. So you go and you grab the amazing Spider-Man and then you grab the very first Spider-Man, but I say we make him into a black suit Spider-Man. That way he's more powerful and a little more uh, entertaining as far as attitude. Next, we have enough digital effects. We've made Groot. We need to make Spider-Pig. We need to see Spider-Pig on the screen. Next thing after that, we need to have her go to the future, bring the 2099 Spider-Man. So then from there, you would have the, the, you know, the fourth Spider-Man that she brought in. She's going to go out, and they're going to have to stop the Sinister Six. Obviously, they're not going to completely stop them, but they're going to be able to put a dent inside of them. The next thing we're going to have is Spider-Man's recovery. So you have the four fight scenes where they go out, and they have to stop the Sinister Six. You have Spider-Man get better. I say we throw in a couple S.H.I.E.L.D. agents that show up at the X-Mansion to help with Spider-Man, maybe one or two heroes, maybe Cap, maybe Iron Man. And then you go ahead and you have the final battle, Sinners of Six versus the Avengers and Spider-Man, and also the alternate Spider-Man. And I think that would make a trick story. The third story I wanna see, obviously it's gonna be a love story. Marvel hasn't done this yet. I see Fox going in this direction first. But a love story, and it's between T'Challa and Storm. You have significant X-Men characters, significant Avengers characters. Storm is also heavily involved with the Avengers. So, you know, you got to kind of figure out how you induce them. You're going to make them start off at their wedding. You're going to start off with them meeting each other, leading up to a wedding. You know, I mean, you have so many ways you can involve all the characters in them. You have X-Men enemies. You have people that T'Challa could fight. You have people that Storm could fight. You have conflicts from within. People may be mad because Storm is coming in becoming the queen and she's not from Wakanda. But you gotta realize Storm is considered a goddess in Africa. And T'Challa, uh, Black Panther, is considered one of the most powerful kings. So it only makes sense why they would marry. And like I said, there's so much stories in the Marvel Universe already about them. I wanna see some uh, notebook love. I mean, seriously, Fifty Shades of Grey, breaking it down, getting freaky, T'Challa and Storm. Holly Berry is so hot, so I would say you would use that one. Who cares if she's a little older? She's still hot, smoking hot. I, I, I would freaking marry her if I was Black Panther. I would just put it like that. And I think that just alone would make a terrific story, maybe an hour, hour and a half. Of, you have some superhero shit, you have some love stuff going on, and there's so many angles you could take at that. All of this would obviously lead up to the X-Men versus the Avengers. And I, I don't think they should try to do that fast. I think they need to go ahead and do a few crossovers. They need to finish out the stories that they have going. I mean, there's comics for days on X-Men versus Avengers. I think they've done the storyline twice in Marvel. And not to mention all the other uh, side comics that were following along with the storyline. So, I mean, you have plenty of stories, plenty of situations that you can turn into real-life movie events. I mean, that one is not even difficult. But like I said, I think they need a good 10 years before they even consider releasing that movie. So they have time to work on it and get it correct. Figure out where their characters need to be, who their characters are. Um, there's a whole lot of characters right now just between the Avengers, the Space Universe, and the X-Men. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of characters that have been created. Hundreds of characters that have been created in the comic books, not even in the movies. So, I'd like to see them bring it all together, but they need time to work on it. They need to build that up. They need to release all the movies they already have done. They need to do, I'd say, at least 10 crossovers where you're bringing the X-Men. It doesn't have to be a lot. I'm talking about just a few. You can have one X-Men in a certain story, one Avenger in an X-Men story. You can have Spider-Man in an X-Men story. You can have you know, X-Men in it. There's so many ways you can go about it. So put it all together. Make a super story. It'll be amazing. Just give it time. Don't try to rush it. And I think it'll all work out. Hey, you guys, tell me what you guys think. Go ahead and drop a like if you like the video. Go ahead and leave a comment. I want to know one. I want you guys to comment and tell me if you think that they should reboot the X-Men. They should reboot anything or should they just build on top of it? 
Uh, let me know in a comment if you think it's a smart just to do with the crossovers. Let me know what you think about my crossovers. Let me know if you think they'll work or they'd be totally stupid. Uh, go ahead and uh, share it if you like the video. And subscribe if you like these videos. I also do music videos. I do martial arts videos. I'm kind of an entrepreneur, so I do it all. Uh, hit me up, you guys. Subscribe, like. Thanks out, Chief CEO, G-Boys.